Hi everyone, it's Katie from the West Dallas Public Library. Today I'm going to be sharing my um, books to give presentation. I know I'm a minute or two early. Um, if you do come in a little bit later, I will be um, uploading this to YouTube as well as Facebook. Um, ooh, there's a weird shadow on my face. Um, so you can definitely check out um, YouTube, I'll post on Facebook as well as Instagram TV. Um, today we are going to be going over some suggestions of books you can give um, uh, adults in your life. Um, so those are readers over 18. Some of these books will appeal to teens. Um, and if you're looking for books for younger readers, I do have two other videos that were posted Monday and Tuesday for the readers ages birth through um, about five. And then um, a video for readers ages about 6 to 11. Um, as with all things, you know the readers in your life better than I do. So um, if you hear me talk about a book and you don't necessarily think it's great for um, uh, the readers you're looking for, that's fine. There are so many books that um, get published every year that there's no way I could touch on even a portion of them. Um, I'm really hoping that today I can give you suggestions and tips as well as some title ideas of books that would make great gifts. Um, I'm in the story room, which is super fun because it's set up for a kid's Christmas story time, so it looks a little bit more festive than if I were decorating myself. Um, again, I'm Katie. Today is Books Live with me, Katie, um, one of the librarians at the West Allis Public Library. Um, and today is all about books that I think would make great gifts. Um, I'm going to hopefully be giving you some tips on how to make your book giving easier, as well as some title suggestions. Um, all of these titles are new, meaning they came out this year. I don't think I have anything that's later than maybe March or April of 2020. So hopefully the readers in your life haven't discovered these yet. I will also admit that they are some popular titles, meaning if you um, if you follow books a lot or are in the library a lot, you're like, okay, okay these aren't the, the, like, these aren't hidden gem books, I guess is the best way to say it. These are books that you're probably going to be easily able to find. If you have questions, please go ahead and ask them in the comments. I will do my best to, to answer them. Um, if I can't do it live because either A, I don't know off the top of my head, or B, I just want to give it the time your question deserves, I will do my best to get back to you either by um, Facebook Messenger, um, or if you leave an email address, I'd be happy to get back to you that way. Okay, so on to my the books. That's what you're here for, right? The biggest tip I have for giving books to readers of any ages, any age, is Make sure you consider the reader. I know personally, it is super hard to not give books that I think people should read. So as opposed to thinking about what you think someone should read, think about what they would want to read. Think about their hobbies, their interests, um, what kind of book would make you think would make them say this is the best gift ever. In preparing for this, I started thinking of those books both I had given and received, and trying to think what made that book such a special memory. And what, nine times out of ten, it was because it was a book either a, I really wanted and then specifically asked for, or it was a book that someone just knew met all my interests, and it was a perfect book to give me. So with that in mind, I'm going to start with my first book. Um, David Chang is a restaurateur. He is also has some po pod podcasts. Sorry. And he is, he hosted the show Ugly Delicious on Netflix. The reason I am re recommending his book is it's a food memoir. He has cookbooks out and there are tons of gorgeous cookbooks that you can give the foodie in your life or the chef in your life. Um, but I'm recommending his memoir because I think um, reading the journey of someone who goes into the food business and their history, um, there's been tons of great memoirs by um, people that own restaurants or chefs or cooks. Um, that I think are fabulous, and I think David Chang right now he's having a pop culture moment. I believe he just helped win a million dollars on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire um, for a charity. So David Chang's Eat a Peach, it's a new memoir. Um, I own this book. I have not yet read it, but I'm a fan of his show. I like some of the things he talks about. So if you have a foodie or a cook in your life, highly recommend giving David Chang's Eat a Peach. Now, here's a way to make this book um, a little bit extra. You could just give the book a book on its own as a perfect gift, or something like this. Imagine giving it with virtual cooking lessons, or one of his cookbooks, or even if you could give a, a gift card to like one of your favorite restaurants 
So again, buying a food memoir or a cookbook and then adding on that little extra to make it um, a super special gift. Okay, um, when I read reviews for this book, I laughed. Because one, it's a subject that there are 800 books written about. And it's an author who writes 800 books. So, but I also laughed. I said, this is the most, for lack of a better word, dad book of the entire year. I'm not going to lie. It comes out next week. It is, again, um, The Last Days of John Lennon by James Patterson. You have two topics that are huge. We have John Lennon of the Beatles, and then it's written by James Patterson. So this is one of those books where I think you give a lot of people because either A, they read James Patterson, or B, they like the Beatles. And um, what I think is special about this book is that it's a nonfiction book by someone who is mainly known for fiction, as well as it takes a popular subject. I am also going to go on the record of saying there is another book written on the same subject um, that is better reviewed than this book. But when I think it comes to meeting popularity and interest, um, this is one of those books that if you bought for a dad or a grandpa or just a fan of James Patterson or um, uh, the Beatles and John Lennon, this you couldn't miss. So The Last Days of John Lennon by James Patterson is one of my recommendations for the sole reason that I think it's going to be appreciated to a lot of people. Now, no less famous, but probably a little less known, is my next subject. I think she is having a little bit of a renaissance, of a, and a resurgence, even though I think a lot would argue she never went anywhere. And this year there are two great books on Dolly Parton. Um, this first one is Dolly Parton's Storyteller, which is written by her, um, and it's My Life in Lyrics. This is a gorgeous book. I was able to look at it when we got our copy in the library. It is huge with full-color photos and her songs and what they mean and the stories behind them. So if you have a fan in your family of country music or music or songwriting in general, this would be a beautiful book to give. I think giving books like this, these coffee table um, browsable books is such a great idea because they're books that, not that they don't make good library library books, check it out from the library. We have it. Um, there's a short wait list for it, but we, we do have it. But because they're not meant to read straight through, they are meant to be kind of browsed, um, paged through. Um, you don't have to read it in order. Books like this, I just think, are great to give. Um, if, again, this is a gorgeous big coffee table, book which also means it's a little bit expensive if you don't think the person in your life wants a coffee table book they want of a more narrative book there is she come by natural um which is a book that looks at the influence of dolly parton songs on the women that we that she writes for it's a shorter book it's more of an essay of um, narrative nonfiction format um so again if you don't want that big coffee table book which i again think are great gifts there is a shorter book on the same subject, um, but how fun would it be, these are my little cardboard because the books are checked out, how fun would it be to put these books together in a little Dolly Parton gift bag? So that's another thing to think of when you're giving books, like can you pair them together? Again, I'm going to probably say this 18 times a day. You can always just give a book. A book in itself is a perfect gift, but think about ways to make them a little bit um, more special. Definitely pair them together with some other titles, or um, find a way... Um, again, with something like this, to find a songwriting book, there's tons of them. I'd be happy to recommend some of those as well. Um, find um, guitar picks or guitar lessons. Um, find, uh, find a way that person listens to music and get them some of her music as well. Um, find some of her old movies and you can give those as well. So again, finding a subject someone might not know about but they're interested in um, and finding the books that will really... Um, pique that interest as well as just be something they enjoy. So Dolly Parton Storyteller, which is by her, her wife in the lyrics, and then this one, which is more of an essay about her influence um, and the women of her story and her songs. I'm not gonna lie, I checked this one out, but I didn't have time to read it, and it sounds really good, so I'm hoping to read this one. Okay, again, with the book, there's things that come out that kind of have, um, it seems, for lack of better word, synchronous, where two or three books come out on the same subject. We're going to go a different direction. So if we went to Dolly Parton, which I'm not going to lie, not that men wouldn't enjoy it, but it would be a great gift for um, an older 
an older, like a woman in your life, whether it's a friend, an aunt, um, a niece, um, I can just think, um, I just imagine giving this to a young woman who's interested in songwriting as kind of inspiration. Um, now, here's a book that's probably for people more <laughs> in my generation, and it, again, it's a double, double feature. Um, the first one cracked me up when it came out because I know it's a movie that a lot of people watched and loved. Um, I know I did when it came out, but I want to say it's 20-something years old now, and I'm probably getting that number wrong. Um, it's All Right, All Right, All Right, the oral history of the movie Dazed and Confused. So if you have a fan of the movie in your life, definitely check this one out or give it as a gift. Again, how fun would it be to give with the soundtrack or even just a fun uh, tie-dyed shirt? Um, you could throw in um, maybe just a memory. Of, again, for me, I think like this would be a fun gift to give a high school friend um, or even a college friend, what I, the people that I watched this movie with originally, um, just because it brings back that sense of nostalgia. And, and I'm not going to lie. If you're not a fan of these and Confused, they have this for so many movies. These oral histories are great. I love reading them. Um, they give the history behind the movie, how it got made. Um, so for your movie buff friends, look for these kind of books. They have them on tons of movies. Now, if you are looking for a book pairing, why not pair the oral history of Daisy Confused with the man, I think that it launched into stardom, Mr. Matthew McConaughey himself. He has a memoir out this year called Green Lights. Um, which talks about his life, his journey in acting, and I think a little bit of his activism. Um, again, I don't know why this made me laugh. Uh, and, um, if you follow the library social media, wouldn't this make a great book? Sorry, I should try to do one right now. Pretend Matthew McConaughey is telling you to buy this book. So, um, for your friend or family members, or like I said, that nostalgic gift, this would be a fun pairing of two books to give together. Matthew McConaughey memoir and um, the oral history of Dazed and Confused. Um, it's not necessarily, again, you don't have to buy these two books, but think about giving books that way. What books could you pair together? What books will spark nostalgia or be about a celebrity the person in your life loves? Now, I love, I think celebrity biographies, no matter whether they're written by actors, musicians, I'm sorry, not by, that would be no more books about the person or biographies. Um, there's so many great ones. This year, there's a Cary Grant one out. Um, so if you have a fan of uh, movies from the years he was acting, um, this would be a fun book to give. Um, again, this is just one of those books where it's a famous person that maybe um, a younger movie buff doesn't know much about, or it's a person you're a fan of that you'd want to learn more about his life. Um, it's by a good author. This book was, again, thinking about that well-reviewed. It has really good reviews, so it's well-written and well-researched. Um, other people that you could look for biographies on, sports. There are so many great sports biographies out there. Um, I'm actually sad I didn't create any of them. I know Don Elway has one out this year, so if you have a football fan in your life, that might be a good one to pull. Um, musicians, there are, again, any musician who has made any impact in the past, I'd say, 50 years probably has a biography on them that would be a great gift for a fan or just someone who you think would want to know more about that person. I picked the Cary Grant book because I think it hits, again, a lot of different generations and um, it was well reviewed and what a great gift to give someone who's a fan of his movies. I'm pulling another book that is, again, that coffee table, that beautifully photographed, that book that you want to look at and browse over time as opposed to read straight through. And again, for the movie fan in your life, um, I think this um, director has a special look that just kind of reaches out to people. Again, I do have to laugh. I feel like it does reach more what I'm going to call my generation. I'm, for reference, um, a late Gen X or early millennial, depending on where you make the break. Um, but this one is accidentally Wes Anderson. It's a photography slash architecture book. And I love how it was kind of, I guess, developed, that it was this couple that as they traveled, um, they found all these buildings in real life that looked like they belonged in a Wes Anderson movie. And you might know his movies. He did like the Royal Tenenbaums, more recently the Grand Budapest um, Hotel. Let's see, um, Life Aquatic with Steve Dizzo. For kids, he did the adaption of the Fantastic Mr. Fox with his claymation. Isle of Dogs is another one. 
So if you like the Moonrise Kingdom, that's what I forgot. Um, if you like the look of his movies, they have a look. And even now, um, how many people do you know that dress up as a character from the real Tenon Bombs or Rushmore? And it has that kind of pop culture touch on that people just know. Um, so if you're a fan of the movies and a fan of kind of that finding in real life um, things that look like they belong in a movie, accidentally Wes Anderson. And again, this is a beautiful coffee table book. I haven't seen it in person, but from reviews, it sounds like a large book with tons of photographs. And again, for fans of his movies, this would be a great gift. And they do have other books both about Wes Anderson movies. I believe it was last year or maybe again. What does time mean in 2020? A couple years ago, a book about his movies and the look of his movies came out. Or you can look for other um, directors. There's lots of them. So this isn't like an like this is the only one out there. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, I've talked a lot about pop culture books. So if you're watching this and going, okay, Katie, the people in my life, I don't know what they read. I don't know the subjects. You know, let's say it's um, someone that you're looking to give a book to, who's either a new person in your life or a new family member, um, or you know, like a distant relative. So for those, I have um, the suggestion of getting either short story or short essay collections. There are so many great collections of short stories and collections of essays, both by the same author and both collected works. Um, and this is really funny, as I was working on this, a library patron did give me the same tip and I had to laugh. So I'm like, yes, that is the, a great gift giving tip because you don't know how much time a person has to read. And I know for me, reading short stories or short essays is a way to fit reading time in if I don't have time to read. Um, this year there are two collections that I think would make excellent gifts as both an introduction to the author or um, to someone who's already a fan to have uh, that in their collection. Um, there's the Neil Gaiman Reader, which is his short fiction. These are stories that were published in journals or in other collections. Um, some of them I think are published in book format for the first time. So if you have a Neil Gaiman fan in your life or if you know someone who you think would really enjoy his works, this is a great would be a great pick um it's again i think if i remember correctly it's not in my notes so i should i should have written this in my notes he had fans decide most of these they, they voted on the stories that they wanted and that's what this is what his selected fiction is um i looked at the table of contents it's some stories i've read it's some i haven't but again as an introduction to the author or to someone who just likes neil gaiman this would be a great um, and on the essay end, David Sedaris. If you haven't read David Sedaris, he is probably one of the funniest essayists around. And I typically recommend people listen to his books because he reads them. And my selling point for his books is it's the only time I have ever been laughing so hard while driving that I had to pull over. Um, because I thought, I, I just I could not control myself. I was laughing so hard. And I pulled over on the road, listened to the story, and then came back on and drove safely away. Um, this is the best of me, so it's the best of his works. Um, if you know someone who likes humorous essays or just kind of likes uh, looking at the absurdity in life, this would be a great collection to give them. Um, again, it's what's nice is he's really picking the best from his essay collections over the years, uh, and it would be a good introduction or definitely for the fan. So again, when you think about the people in your life and the books they might want to read, they might not have time to sit down and read the whole novel. So finding those short stories or short essays, and these are just two of many that are out there. Um, again, Neil Gaiman writes more science fiction or fantasy, so you could find um, more realistic or contemporary stuff. Um, David Sedaris does humor. You can definitely find more serious essays. I personally love the humor. It's just me. Um, I like reading funny stuff. Okay, we're getting to the end of my books, I promise, and then I'm going to give some general tips. Okay, and my, oh, am I forgetting a card? Um, my last pick is books about books. If you have a reader in your life, you might not know the exact book they want to read, but there's so many great books written about books. Um, the Ideal Bookshelf are some of my favorites. I didn't pull it because it is another title. And um, those are just great books to give to you. But the one I picked for this year is I Will Judge You by Your Bookshelf. It's a graphic novel. And um, from the reviews, it sounds like it's told in two panel stories. So it's two panels about um, that tell the story. 
And I just like this idea of judging people by their bookshelf because as a reader, sometimes you joke like, well, where is it? Where are the books in your house? Like, where do you keep them? And then you look what's there. What do they read? What are the books they put that they show off? So I think giving this to a reader would just be such a funny book because just because of the title. I'm sure it's a great book. Um, but again, I haven't even seen it. It's new. Um, so again, um, I jokingly wrote like, this is who you give to the person in your book club that you're judging with when people pick titles you don't like. And I'm not saying there's a book for every reader. I am the first person to say that. But sometimes people pick stuff and you're like, really? That book? So this is the book that you give to your friend that you judge books with. And um, there's a book for every reader. And I believe every book has its place for the right person. But you're allowed to have opinions too. Okay, so that was a whole bunch of books. I am going to write up the books I recommended, and it'll be in a post that hopefully will go up on both our Stafford blogs um, and YouTube later today, and I will post links on Facebook. This video I will archive so you can watch it later if you miss some of the titles or would like to watch it again. Um, I didn't get any questions, and that's fine. You can always contact me at the library or send me an email. Um, I'm happy to answer your book recommendation or gift questions. So I'd like to conclude with a couple of things. I did talk about some of these ideas throughout this, um, but just tips for giving books in general. Again, number one tip for giving books, think about the reader and what they want to read, not what you want them to read. You notice I probably didn't, um, I didn't recommend any highly political or justice um, related books. I don't think those are bad gifts if you know the person wants them. I think it's better to focus on books when you give them unless you know they want them that are more informative as opposed to opinion. And that's just me. You can disagree with me. Um, but really think about the person you're giving the book to and what they want to read. Number one tip, think about the reader you're giving to. Um, also, think about books readers won't buy for themselves. This is why I didn't talk about fiction at all. Um, not because I don't think fiction is good to give. I think it is great to give. But I think a lot of people forget about nonfiction, especially really good, readable nonfiction. And then when they find it, they're like surprised. Like, this was such a great book. And it's like, yes, there is nonfiction published on amazing, readable subjects that aren't like dry history books. So this is my way of... I'm saying, like, look for these nonfiction gems, but also um, buy your books that a reader might not think to read themselves or might not find. Um, so find those hidden gems, even if these are hidden gems in the sense that they're going to be a nonfiction bestsellers, they might not make that crossover to most of the general population. Okay, again, giving a good book on its own is a perfect and lovely way to give a gift. However, I love adding on little extras to make them special. Um, book boxes are huge. I know we talk about here in the library. We've done them for prizes. So when I talk about a book box, I'm talking about a box that has a book and either other books and DVDs and stuff in it. Or for a gift, you could think a little bit more consumable. Um, what would be better than um, like the I Will Judge You by your bookshelf book and then have a reading journal and some gel pens and maybe um, some coffee in it? Um, I know I talked with the David Chang book about throwing in like some good book for cooking lessons or something like that. Um, in general, coffee, tea, um, cocoa make great little throw into books. Um, you can go a little bit further and do chocolate or a snack um, or even like bath salts or a nice bath bomb if you know the person likes to chill out that way. So again, think about little ways you can make the book a little bit more special, whether it's a tie-in gift or um, just something to make the reading experience nicer. And finally, have fun. Giving books and reading is supposed to be fun. So this is a time where you can look for the fun book, the funny book, the book that, again, might be not as serious as the books the person reads normally. You know, a college student might want their textbooks, but why not give them short stories or essays that they can read in between? Um, give the person that reads history kind of a more humorous history, like the history of a movie they might like, or a biography of an actor. Have fun buying the books. This is a gift. It's supposed to be fun. It's not work. Once it becomes work, take a break. Um, I'm going to flip my script quick. So that's all I have for today. Thank you for joining me on Book Slide with Katie. Again, if you're looking for book suggestions for younger readers, I have videos um, that I posted on Monday and Tuesday 
with suggestions for readers, um, there's two videos and a couple of pages uh, birth through about 11. Tomorrow at about 10 a.m. I'll be posting a short video with suggestions for teens and that's the readers about ages 12 to 18. And on Friday I will have some more suggestions for adult readers because I had a list of over 25 books that I wanted to talk about and I knew I could not do that all live for your sake and mine. Um, just a couple things. We have a whole bunch of stuff going on at the library and one is that I'm excited about is our movie madness um, holiday winter holiday movie madness which is a bracket style um, voting where you can help us pick the best holiday movies ever it's our first round we have 32 movies going head to head and we have paper ballots in the library as well as a google form that I will link to in the description when I post this so you have until Sunday to get the first round in then we're going to post the winners and do another round of voting. So it's just a fun way to have fun this holiday season. Okay, so I'll be back tomorrow with a recorded video for teens and a recorded video for adults on Friday. And then the next Books Live with Katie is actually at the end of the month. I want to say it's the 29th or 30th. Oh my goodness. And we're going to talk about reading resolutions. So I hope you found some ideas of books to give. And, or get the very least suggestions on ways to find the best books to give. And let me know if you have questions. And I'll see you at the library. Thanks for joining me, everyone.